right. It is my volume. Okay, I think it is. Hello and welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time I'm plugging along, we looked at a deed in a bug in the deed tracker related to conflicting quests, quests that have the same name as deeds. And that led us to realizing that there were multiple issues with conflicting quests. Today we're gonna finalize some changes I've made during the week and update the save file format to use quest IDs instead of deed IDs uh, to track these things because it just makes life so much easier. Anyway, as always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions. We're gonna start it off here with a chat from a uh, question from Aaron Bard in chat who asks, right, uh, I am wondering if it is possible to write a plugin to create more housing hooks. What are the limitations there? What a great question. Um, so when you are writing a plugin for Lord of the Rings Online or for any you know game that allows for plugins, but specifically Lord of the Rings Online, you are using some portion of the language, which is in this case Lua, and a specific version of it, Lua 5.1. So you can do whatever Lord of the Rings Online uh, SSG has allowed you to do, use from Lua 5.1, uh, function calls, variables, these kind of things, but not other things. Lua 5.1 probably includes some basic uh, web capability, contacting a web site, um, send, you know, creating files, loading files, deleting files, that kind of thing. And so you can only do a very small amount of file manipulation and you can't uh, contact web pages or, or uh, go off board or anything like that. So we're using part of Lua 5.1 and whenever we want to ask Lotro to do something we're using the Lotro API, uh, the Lotro Lua API. Uh, and this is this shows us what we can do in the game. Uh, two of the big ones are how to make things show up on the screen. Um, it's turbine.ui, turbine.ui.lotro. Uh, game was originally made by a company called Turbine, uh, and yeah, let me just tell people that I can be a target. Uh, this was originally made by Turbine. It is now uh, made by SSG, or continues to be made by SSG. Uh, but all of the namespaces are just named as they were originally, which that way nothing broke during the transition. So two of the big namespaces have to do with making stuff show up on the screen. Buttons and windows and checkboxes and all these things. S some of the, uh, two of the other big ones are the gameplay namespaces. And these are how you uh, get information about the state of the game. Um, or in some small cases, change, change the state of the game. So you can get information about characters, about your target, about what's in your inventory, uh, that kind of thing. And then the final namespace is just Turbine. And this is your very low level stuff. Uh, how, to, how to get chat messages, uh, how to do things like what time is it? <laughs> what language is the client in? Uh, and these sorts of things. Um, and you know what other plugins are available uh, and what commands are there and I would like to add a command for myself. So if you wanted to say support slash uh, deed to make the deed tracker pop up slash deed. Well, that's an unknown command because you have to have a plugin loaded for those commands to work. But as soon as deed tracker is loaded, that command uh, starts working and I can make the window open and close with that. So those are the basic namespaces. And crucially, you can't do something in the plugin unless uh, the developers have basically blessed it and said, yes, that is a thing you can do. So you can't use a plugin to query what uh, hooks are available in my house because there is no function to ask the client through the API what hooks are there. Uh, similarly, uh, a newer issue is the um, carryalls. Uh, we can see through chat messages when something has gone into a carryall or where, when it comes out of a carryall but we can't tell which carryall went into or out of, and we cannot inspect the contents of a carryall programmatically uh, using the Lotro API. And so that's been a, a, a bit of a sad point for a little while, is uh, if you only have a couple of carryalls, then you could easily have a plugin to say, this thing is in one of your carryalls. But if you have a bunch of carryalls, that's not too useful, right? Um, 
It's like it's in one of your carryalls, one of your 15 carryalls. Just grab them all out of your shared storage, and it'll be in one of them. Um, so it would be neat if a plugin could know specifically which carryall things were in. And I imagine you can write a plugin such as to say, you know, I always put this thing into this carryall, except it is difficult to associate a carryall with, you know, to know which carryall we're talking about. Um, and so the problem remains. Uh, SSG has not yet expanded the Lotro API to offer us a programmatic way to look into a specific carryall or to just differentiate two different carryalls because we don't have a way to rename them and Lotro APIs don't in general have access to the internal ID of an item. Oh, this is bag number seven, this is bag number 14. Uh, but a much longer and harder to pronounce number. And so if there is not a, a function in the Lotro API to do something, then as a general rule, it is very difficult to do it or possibly impossible. If it has to do with information that is coming in through some other way, for instance, the deed tracker cannot know that you completed a deed, but it can see in your quest uh, chat channel the text completed something. And it can take that something and look up in the list of all deeds and say, is does that look like a deed? <laughs> and if it does look like a deed, it can think, oh, okay, maybe you completed a deed. That's how the deed tracker works because the API does not give us access to the deed log, but by monitoring chat messages, we can kind of pretend. So Aaron Bard, uh, plugins don't have access to know what housing hooks you have, and they especially don't have access to change any of your housing hooks. Uh, and I think it could be interesting to have plugins that could work with your housing hooks, uh, but right now that is just a game a UI thing only. Uh, plugins don't have access to that. Uh, John says, I'm always doing the carry all shuffle. Uh, yeah, I've shown this before and I should do a more comprehensive uh, talk about it at some point, but for me, my carry alls are organized based off of their function. And so, um, for instance, whoops, I, I store all of my metals and my crit items in a specific set of carryalls, and they're in my shared storage in a bucket called metals slash crit. And so I happen to know that all my higher level than tier six are in the first one for metals, tier one through tier six, and that's all the way through um, Kazad, uh, go in the second one, and all of my crit items go in the third. So if I just need a crit item, I can just grab that third one, open it up, and look, it's, it's all of my crit items, right? Um, so that's pretty easy to, to, to do on, if, if you're willing to be kind of uh, strict with yourself and you know pull the thing out, manipulate it, and make sure you put it back in the same spot. But with that kind of a system, it means that any of my characters have easy access to any of the things stored in one of these carryalls. So for instance, if I need um, leathers, well, I know that Aphidil here is my metal slash metal worker, metal smith slash Taylor, and so I know the, just because that's the way I've done it, that this first one has all of my hides and leathers. Cool, just grab what I need, and all the tailoring adjacent items, silk bolts and wax and, and that sort of thing, tailoring and uh, woodworking. Um, and then I just remember to put it back where it goes. Um, so my jeweler cook, okay cool, the first one of these has all of my jewels in it, the next three are all of my cook things, great. Uh, so. That's my solution, it, and if something goes into the wrong bag, it's kind of on me to recognize that and, and fix the problem, because the game doesn't know that this is the organization, it's just my organization. So maybe that will help some people. Uh, if you have share, um, crafting carryalls especially, but carryalls in general, highly recommend finding space in your shared storage for them if you haven't already. Um, except for the ones that are in your inventory when you're playing. I, but even then, I would recommend, if you have a lot of alts, just at the end of your play session, put them back into shared storage, and then whatever character you log in as, you have full access to all of the, all of them. Um, anyway. Uh, yes. Uh, John says, do new plugins have to be approved by Standing Stone? No. Um, plugins are not supported by Standing Stone, and if you're ever having problems with your uh, Lotro client, one of the first things that they'll probably ask you to do is make sure all of your plugins are turned off and set to not automatically load when you log in. 
uh, and you know, uh, exit the game, come back in, uh, having no plugins loaded. Uh, and that's just because uh, plugins can cause um, either problems or things that, that cause the game to be, or cause your interaction with the game to be just a little bit different that you might not realize it's coming from a plugin. So for instance, um, there is some plugin attribute somewhere up here in the upper left hand of my uh, screen that makes it so, um, when I have all my plugins loaded, which I don't right now, that makes it so that there's something over my character screen in its default position. And when I go to click, click and drag it, there's something covering it that should be ignoring mouse clicks, but it wasn't set up properly. And so I have to come on over here to the right side of the screen, or right side of the character screen to get out from under something over here. And while that could be a game element, it's probably a plugin element. But there's no plugin visible there, right? So if you're someone who is using plugins but don't really have a good uh, understanding of some of the underlying mechanics, like Windows will absorb your mouse click unless you explicitly say don't do that, um, or things like that. Unless you're aware of these things, you'll just be like, I'm trying to move my character screen and it's not moving and it's a bug. Uh, and then they'll be like, it works just fine on our machines because they're not running with the plugins. So SSG doesn't have to approve plugins, but SSG would, would ask that if you're having a problem with your game, make sure you don't have any plugins running uh, and see if you still have a problem with your game. That being said, um, the most common place for you to find plugins for Lord of the Rings Online is lotrointerface.com. And here, when you do upload um, a, a plugin, so let's see. Upload and update. Um, when you are upload, uploading or updating a plugin, there will be a, a set of criteria there that include, you know, don't upload executable programs, don't uh, upload malicious code. It'll be uh, scanned. It has to be approved uh, on their end before they'll list it in their database. So there, there is some um, uh, oversight in that sense, but. Yeah, there's, there's no one really paying a lot of attention to these other than the community who uses the plugins. So if a plugin were to do something uh, sneaky, like put a transparent window over your whole screen that absorbs mouse clickings, well, that would be a mean thing to do, perhaps. Uh, and I think people would talk about it, and then no one would, would download the plugin anymore. Also, plugins, in a general sense, cannot intercept keyboard commands. So while that would be annoying for a little while, you can always uh, you know, type enter slash plugins unload, and then all plugins are unloaded. And since plugins can't intercept any of those keystrokes uh, or even see that they're happening, uh, then it's a way to, even if there was a, a, a prankstery plugin that was trying to mess with people that way, you can still get rid of it or just log out because again you can always press the escape key uh, log out and then set plugins to not auto load so you always have the full control over what's getting loaded in on your system hmm. Aaron Bard says tangent here speaking of correcting client issues is anyone else who runs a hobbit Male Hobbit noticed an animation glitch in several dance emotes wherein the Hobbit tries to almost clap before starting the animation over again. No, um, I tend to make uh, female characters, and so my Hobbits are all female. Uh, I think they have fantastic charge noises, which I can't do in here because I am in serious business. Otherwise, I would. Um, but I know I, I have very little experience with Hobbit males and. Sometimes when I'm listening to Little Redhead and Green Dragon Friday and I hear the Hobbit males uh, emoting, it is very strange to me. Um, oh, cool. I guess people are done. Um, Pavel says, too many plugins are old and don't work. Well, many plugins are old. Um, but a lot of plugins that are old will still work. Um, you may find them in the outdated plugins uh, section of the Lotro, uh, or they may, may be listed as outdated, uh, but the Lotro Lua API changes slowly, and a lot of plugins either do still work, even if they haven't been touched in five or 10 years, 
or could work with very minor alterations. Um, for instance, I think recently the Russian enumeration was removed from the uh, official API. So if you try to access that, you get, a, you get an error. But it's super easy uh, with a one line change to throw that in and then any plugin that was looking for a Ru the Russian language enumeration will just work again. So uh, don't be too distracted by the age of the plugin, especially if people are still using it or say, saying that they're using it. Even if it's five or 10 years old, it'll probably be, um, it, it might still be workable. Um, for instance, and it depends on the complexity of it as well. But for instance, if you look at the Opaque Quest tracker that I uh, put out there, I last updated it uh, over a year ago. It's fine, right? It works fine, and it does such a small amount of stuff that it's likely to continue working fine in perpetuity. And also, it's very simple, so I'm unlikely to change it anytime soon. And it boggles my mind, but apparently it's been downloaded 14,000 times. Cool, I'm glad people are using it. But um, this, this thing that you can put behind your quest tracker so you can read the text easier, this is going to probably keep working for a decade without anyone touching it. Uh, so don't worry about the age of that. Uh, just just see if it works or not. See if other people are saying to work it, uh, say, saying to try it. Um, the plugins that are listed in this plugins command uh, should uh, still work. Although, let's see. The daily tasks plugin is a little less useful nowadays because of the tooltips that we have for them, uh, but it still is a huge database of information. Uh, so I wouldn't even say it is um, uh, useless, it just has less utility now that uh, there's some better in-game support for knowing uh, about stuff. Let's see. Pavel doesn't like some of the changes that have happened to minstrels, it sounds like. Um, I primarily run minstrels, and I've definitely found the recent changes, uh, it takes some getting used to. Uh, I was very, very used to it. I had a lot of muscle memory of, cool, we've hit the end of combat, go ahead and do, redo my anthems. Or, oh, go ahead and do my improved cry of the chorus and redo my anthems. Uh, or running around and, okay, let's get major ballads up so I can do a couple of anthems. Uh, so that was part of my repertoire. And the changes they made have removed a lot of that. And on the one hand, I feel a little less buffed when we first start a combat. But on the other hand, I, d I think it, it fits fine with the the how the world is. Uh, and it's not a huge deal. Uh, I still have access to three different anthems, just like I did before in Redline. Uh, and if the fight goes on long enough, I'll have uh, all of them up and running. And it's fine. Um, it just it took me some getting used to. Uh, and because I ran with the other one for so many years, uh, I probably would, you know, pref you know, like it if it came back. But I don't, I don't have any problems with it not coming back. <laughs> so I hope you give the uh, minstrels a chance. Uh, they feel, you know, as effective as they did a few years ago before some of the recent changes uh, to me. But I've never been an end game player of Lotro, so uh, if you're having difficulty using them in raids, uh, level 140 raids, the same as you were, uh, then you're going to have a different experience than I have. John says, the large wardrobe window must be one of the most popular. Yeah, um, so there, the things you can do uh, to alter the game are kind of divided into plugins and um, skins. And if you're doing skins, um, I don't know, where's that? Skin, cool. In UI settings, there's a, current, uh, there's a user skin uh, combo. And this is where you would uh, change your skin if you have some downloaded. And Bart says, been thinking about running a minstrel. Would be willing to talk a little bit about how the combat works. Yeah, um, so different from the hunter class, you'd think. I, I agree it feels different. Um, we'll come back to that in just a second. Pavel says, if you have minstrels since day one, you can see changes. Almost certainly, and there's some really interesting 
remnants in the Lotro API where you can see things that used to be true, used to be a part of Minstrels a long time ago and just aren't anymore. So if we come into uh, uh, gameplay, um, I think it's attributes, and come into Minstrel, like there are some things here to tell. Is Serenade tier one, two, or three available? Awesome. I don't know what a serenade is, but they went away long before I started playing uh, Lotro. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Rosh says, any UI update to the game coming along make it more modern and usable? Um, SSG is constantly, I'm sorry if you can hear construction noise in the background, my, uh, my neighbor is doing something interesting. Um, anyway, um, SSG is constantly making improvements to the game and they have not announced any short-term plans for uh, a UI overhaul, but they keep on doing things. So uh, while they don't have any short-term plans to do that, they do have a roadmap for this year over at Lotro.com. Let's see. I'll go ahead and link it in here. So you can find the 2023 roadmap over at lotro.com slash news slash lotro dash new, uh, letter dash 2023. Uh, and this is what they are aiming to get done in 2023. If they have time and bandwidth for other things, this is not exhaustive. They will do other things. But these are the, the points they want to hit throughout the year. Uh, so for instance, from a graphics perspective, they do have new biomes coming, they hope, in quarter four. Uh, and new areas, uh, they're looking to expand the story even further uh, beyond where they already have. But uh, you'll note that a graphics overhaul is not one of the major bullet points on this uh, roadmap. And there's textual information about, uh, about things here as well. So do check it out. But this is a pretty reasonable uh, expectation of what we can hope to see in 2023 plus some extra stuff if they, uh, if they don't run into any problems that slow them down. All right, I'm just gonna put myself on follow there. <laughs> Okay, um, after this person has finished bopping me around, uh, Aaron Bard, let me, let me show you what combat is like on a minstrel. But the short answer, answer is that minstrels uh, do not do inductions for attacking abilities. Um, with, with the exception of their fear and their ignore me abilities, I think those both have an induction. Uh, but in general, if it does damage to an opponent, then it is, does not have an induction. Uh, it's only the healing abilities of a minstrel that have inductions. So first of all, that's the thing that really draws me to minstrels because I'm not a, uh, a fan of inductions. Uh, bo both because I'm impatient. If I hit a button, I want the thing to happen now. Uh, <laughs> uh, and also if you do ever experience any lag and that causes you like you want to run and stop and do a thing uh, minstrels never have that message pop up of oh you can't do that while you're moving uh, they can do anything while they're moving if it's not healing related and if you are doing healing you're probably just standing in one spot um, and so let's go ahead and take ourselves somewhere that's not the, the key I wanted. There we go. So I'm just going to pop myself over to stand guard. Now, this character is on deadly plus zero mode. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and pop a little thing. Cool. Um, so if you're not familiar, uh, landscape difficulty mode is something that's available on Treebeard and Shadowfax, and it makes uh, fighting in landscape more difficult. So I am going to make sure that I am in DPS mode. 
great, I am. And then just uh, step out and find some stuff to go uh, yell at. One of the things I really like about minstrels is that a lot of their attacks feature yelling, as do other classes. But uh, if, my, if the class did not include any hobbit yelling at my enemies, I might be uh, turned off from it. So minstrels do not disappoint there either. Okay, so uh, just heading out. Pavel, uh, I think, is saying that um, in uh, Dissonant Stance, uh, which is your attacking mode as a minstrel, just like hunters have stances, minstrels have stances, in Dissonant Stance, all of your heals become self-heals. So you can still heal yourself, uh, but you can't heal anyone else unless you ch change out of your damage stance into something else. Um, Neftario uh, asks in chat, uh, can I complete all the content from for free? And the answer is you can do a lot in Lord of the Rings Online for free. I think the first hundred or so levels, the content that takes you into Gondor, uh, are available for a free-to-play account. But after that, uh, content does become uh, locked behind a purchase, either through in-game currency called Lotra Points, which you can earn in-game as well as pay money for, or through a real money purchase. So if you're thinking about playing Lord of the Rings Online and are worried about, oh, but what if I run out of content? Well, first of all, if you want, you can spend many, many hours uh, without ever getting you know, to the point where you've run out of content. Uh, just like many other MMOs, there's a lot to do here. Neftari asks, how much is the purchase in game? I can't actually answer that question on this character because things I've already purchased don't show up in the Lotro store. But what I can say is I feel like the answer is somewhere around 2,000 Lotro points for an expansion. Um, and you'll have to find out more information from, say, the Lotro store uh, or um, the Lotro wiki for specifics. But you can imagine about 2,000 Lotro points. And in your head, you can kind of imagine that uh, one, you know, uh, that that's about 20 American dollars if you wanted to convert it straight up into money. Okay, so um, minstrels have a damage over time ability called Timeless Echoes of Battle, and some of their uh, damage abilities can also proc uh, d uh, damage over time effects on the target, but for the most part, you are just doing a lot of damage really fast. So, for instance, um, your basic uh, s skills that just do damage uh, and are not complicated by being ballads or anthems uh, include Call of Fate, Dissonant Piercing Cry, um, Dissonant Strike, Call of Arome, Cry of the Valar, Cry of the Wizards, and Call of Second Age. Now, uh, I believe these last four are unlocked uh, through um, your trait tree. So you won't have them all, you won't have a lot of these when you first start, but you, you won't have these unless you trait into them. Um, I believe Color Rome is here, Cry of the Wizards is there, and so on. Um, so some, some of these are only available through uh, Red Lion uh, traits. Um, y the other thing that complicates um, minstrels over uh, some other classes, or a, a place where they are different, is they have things called uh, ballads and anthems. Ballads are kind of your basic uh, damage ability, and anthems can only be activated once you have the correct number of ballads or more activated. So my lesser anthem 2 is available because I have at least one ballad buff active, and my greater anthem of war is not because I only have one anthem active. Let's go ahead and Sorry, only one uh, ballad active. So I've got two ballads active right now. Ballads, once you've done them, will stay active for as long as you're in combat, plus another nine seconds, asterisk. Um, and so minstrels really like jumping from one combat into another within nine seconds, because it means your ballads stay active. Uh, and when they are active, they're giving you something. For a red line uh, minstrel, uh, each one's giving you plus 3% uh, tactical damage and some other minor effects, but mostly it's that. So having those active when you first go into combat means plus 9% damage, always nice to have. Okay. Neftero says, if I subscribe, the new expansions are included. What a great question. Um, unfortunately, I am a bit of a um, expansion uh, sucker. So I tend to buy the expansions regardless. 
and I don't know for sure what content's available for free versus what content is locked behind a paywall. Um, someone else in chat might have a better idea than me, and certainly people over on the forums will, will be able to answer what things can you do for free. Um, uh, Pavel points out in chat that you can earn the in-game currency, especially if, if you have more time than you have money, by, by just running characters through the content. Uh, there's in-game uh, uh, things called deeds. When you complete them, you often get uh, Lotra points. So for instance, uh, my quest, no, uh, History of the Dunedain. When I completed History of the Dunedain, I re received 10 Lotra points. And so you can imagine doing deeds like that you know, around 200 times, and you have the cost of a new expansion. Um, okay. So, uh, minstrels have ballads, minstrels have anthems, and your ballads uh, and anthems make a lot more sense, at least to me, if you use the minstrel buff plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and load that up. The main window, uh, let's go ahead and make that bigger. So I'm going to come in into the plugin manager, minstrel buff, and use the anthem priority, and we're just going to make that bigger. Cool. Okay. So the Minstrel Buff plugin tells you information about which of your ballads and anthems are uh, active. So right now we can see I have one ballad active. I'm going to go ahead and activate my first anthem. Anthems. Ha uh, have a duration. They start, I think, with 45 seconds, and you can incre increase that with uh, traits or legacies. Traceries? Sorry. Um, and so, ideally, in a minstrel combat, you're going to have ballads active. Uh, there's, uh, there's more going on uh, with strategy, but your basic idea is let's have ballads active, and let's get anthems active as well. Hang on a sec. I want to use my anthem overlay. Cool. Now there's a lot uh, of, of more subtle things. We don't need to uh, worry about too much of it right now. Uh, but um, your basic ability is a ballad. Ballads activate anthems, or uh, enable you to do anthems. Oh wow, apparently I just ran too far from this thing. <clears throat> I want your hide. Uh, and then you have all the other stuff. I just used two of them in quick succession, Call to Fate and Dissonant Piercing Cry. You have a melee ability, Dissonant Strike, which you just swing your sword at them. Um, and you can improve that with uh, traits to recover morale when you do it, which is a common red line thing. Uh, and then you have some area effect things. So I've divided my uh, not ballad anthem abilities into single target and area target. And so um, of these eight ones up here, four of them are areas. And I think they're probably why I love the Minstrel the most, is you can get a lot of um, area effect damage uh, very quickly. And so, oh, it's already dead. Apparently I need to go somewhere harder. Um, so uh, two of them bring down great big sky beams, uh, makes me feel very powerful. <laughs> and all of them do lots of damage in an uh, area. Uh, and so, uh, one of them you can spec into being a uh, multi-second area effect stun um, for three seconds. So we're going to go ahead and play around with that for a sec. I'm going to get out of sync with uh, Rosenblum on deeds here. It's very sad. Um, but no problem. So we can see if I go ahead and use that, all of them get stunned for three seconds, which is just a fantastic get out of trouble effect. Or if you're not in particular danger, it just feels really effective in uh, in combat to just be saying, nope, uh, you're all just not going to do anything for three seconds. Uh, let's everyone reposition. Mel says, go to the trolls. I'm on Deadly plus zero, and Limelight Gorge is pretty rough in uh, Deadly plus zero. Uh, or, or higher Deadlies, I would imagine. Um, and I've been told that when you play on Deadly uh, in the landscape difficulty, that it feels a lot like the difficulty of the game on landscape back in the beginning, before they uh, readjusted the difficulty for what a lot of the players were looking for. Uh, and so uh, regardless of whether that's true or not, I'm a big fan of, of playing it here on Treebeard. OK. A 
little redhead points out that there are some of the expansions are on sale this week in the Lotro store. So this is a uh, a good time. Uh, I'm gonna go to Little Night Gorge and get murdered, uh, just for the heck of it. Um, so through April 30th, which is in five days, uh, you can get 25% off Fate of Gundabad, 50% off War of Three Peaks, 75% off of Mordor, 75% off of Minas Morholm. And you can see the older the expansion, the uh, the deeper the discounts. Well, if I'm going to be here, I might as well get these quests. Um, and so, let's see. Fenton thinks expansions up to War for Peaks are included. Gundabad has to be bought. I would guess that since um, they still offer the ability to purchase uh, Mordor and beyond on the expansions website, that the only things that are wrapped into every new account regardless are pre-Mordor. But even so, that still gets you through level 95 content and all the way to Minas Tirith, uh, even, if, uh, even if that's where it is. Lord Zach says, if I recall correctly, last time I checked, subscribing gives quest packs, but not expansions. Um, which is uh, a distinction that I am very ignorant of because, again, I've, I'm a, both a subscriber and a collector of the expansions. Cross Chalice says, I noticed that more of the carryalls are uh, in the Lotro store right now. Will they be there until May 15 because of the anniversary? Um, and people are chatting about that. Let me uh, catch up before I answer. Uh, I think Pebbles admiring the Minster Buff plugin. I'm a big fan of it. Um, Little Redhead points out, a uh, the SSG community manager, uh, said that they're going to be permanently in this store. Uh, awesome. There's a wiki page with more information On the about um, the account types. Well, I don't see an obvious uh, link there, but all right. Hey, Rose. Well, if we're going to be fighting these difficult things, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, buff up here a little bit. But we might might be murderated. Um, yes, so I can't uh, find the announcement recently, but it was announced that some of the carryalls will be permanently in this store. Um, I believe that is true for craft and maybe uh, die carryalls. Um, however, not carryalls. So crafting carryalls, um, task carryalls are in the store now. Those may have been included in the announcement. Uh, that would be something I'd want to check on. Um, and there also are die carryalls in the store. Uh, and most or all of those uh, have been. Uh, switch to the permanently available category, which is excellent. <laughs> Aaron Bard, before is putting Hobbit on the line for our education. Yeah, so uh, things to be aware of when you're playing a minstrel. Cry of the Wizards, once you can get it, has a target movement is slowed by 30% effect, which is super useful when your target wants to murder you. Um, <laughs> however, it is your capstone ability, one of the two anyway, in the red line. So you're not going to get it until uh, roughly levels 40 to 50, somewhere in there. Um, but once you do, it is lovely. Um, what else do we have? Uh, your Call of Arome uh, reduces the light mitigation of the enemy, which is very handy if you have a hunter who also wants to do light damage or uh, other light dealing uh, um, companions. And we do have corruption removal, of course, though that is not a concern here. And yes, the Call of the Second Age, as we mentioned, has a stun effect. So does uh, Dissonant Piercing Cry if you are in melody stance, and switching between stances is not that slow. So I'm going to go ahead and give uh, uh, this a start, and we'll see just how bad this is. One of the things I love about Hobbit, uh, well, sorry, Minstrels, is the maneuverability. As I mentioned, so I've just activated my three second stun so I can get a little distance, there are no inductions when you are doing damage as a hob, uh, <laughs> did it again, as a minstrel. And so um, there is no such thing as 
Oh, I've got to stop and do this. Uh, everything uh, is basically. Uh... Oh, where's the stop attacking? Well, we're, we're almost done. Um, all of your abilities happen without induction. The only uh, th uh, slight uh, exception to that is Cry of the Wizards has a animation. It used to be a longer animation before the damage went out. Doesn't require an induction, but your character was like, Arrgh! and then the attack went out. And now, now it goes out in the middle of that uh, noise, in, in the middle of that animation. But it never took an induction. It was just a, there is a delay between you hitting the button and the thing going out. Uh, and that could actually be um, a meaningful delay because there are plenty of times when I have hit the button, then the enemy has stunned me or silenced me and the, the damage did not go out. But the, uh, the ability was still available when I came back in. So cool, yes, two of us were able to take out a spider with a little bit of uh, finag uh, finagling. Um, Pavel says, which server are you in? Uh, I'm playing on Treebeard, uh, and Treebeard gives us landscape difficulty, and so we have uh, uh, the, our attacks do less damage to the enemy, and their attacks deal more damage to us, and occasionally there are boxes on the ground, red boxes, and if we stand in them, we'll take lots of damage. Werewolf says, I was going to ask if you needed help, but looks like you all got it. Thank you, Werewolf. I mean, you'd be welcome. I wasn't planning on spending a lot of time here, but I was curious uh, how minstrels do, and it shows off minstrel uh, combat better than goats, which is, they just go down too fast. So one of the, one of the things enemies do uh, that really hinders a minstrel is the silence ability, uh, because pretty much everything a minstrel does requires you to be able to make noise. Uh, and so, all right. Yeah, these, these trolls are uh, tougher than the spiders, I would say. Um, and so uh, you're, you have one ability that gets rid of silencing. Uh, Cry of the Chorus uh, will take care of that. Um, so Cry, Cry of the Chorus will uh, break a silence, but Cry of the Chorus itself has a 30 second or 45 second um, uh, cooldown, and so it, if something is going to be silencing you over and over, it is only marginally useful. <laughs> well, one of, one of the things I appreciate about Little Gorge is a it is it does have difficulty even on this uh, on the server because of the uh, landscape difficulty. If if I didn't have that, I might feel more comfortable here. But all three of the types, the trees and the the trolls and the spiders, just feel a little bit different when you're fighting them. And I like that as well. <laughs> Babel says, why not on Evernight best server? If, if you're asking why I'm not playing on Evernight, it's because uh, I'm playing on Treebeard. I do have some characters on Evernight, but uh, Evernight does not have um, landscape difficulty. And we were interested in experiencing the content in the uh, uh, legendary server manner where you got occasional access to the content and you could really spend some time with it. Uh, we're not doing camp. <laughs> so, uh, we're just going to go find a tree and then we'll have done our trio. Ah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's that's basically the two reasons why we really enjoy playing on Treebeard is we're really enjoying getting a chance to sit with the content and not just breeze past it on our way to Minas Tirith or, or Mordor or wherever the next thing is. Uh, and it also has the landscape difficulty. Uh, if you are a fan of breezing through content, uh, Shadowfax also has landscape uh, difficulty uh, for a little while longer. And instead of uh, getting new content every six months, it was getting new content every three months. But I believe uh, Shadowfax will be reaching live servers this year and being end of life uh, as a result. <laughs> And Bird says the animation of that spider is horribly tarantula accurate. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate that they put some work into some of the modeling that we're doing here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and rebuff, uh, and we'll see what happens. There are two types of the creatures here in the Limit Gorge, if you're not familiar with it. And there's the basic version of the thing, the tree, uh, the who worn the troll, the spider. And then there's one that uh, is... Uh, double the morale, and those are usually at fixed locations. There's two of the trolls, uh, maybe three of the trees, and two of the spiders. Mm -hmm. um, and hmm? and so you. 
uh, do want to be careful what you are engaging because oftentimes you might have a reasonably easy fight on the normal ones, but the double morale ones, they, they also hit more. And sometimes it is that all of your cool stuff that you use to take down the normal ones is now on cooldown just at about the time the, the double morale one is at half morale, uh, which is an inconvenient time to be waiting on cooldowns. Um, so, this is kind of what it's like to be a minstrel. I spend a lot of time moving around, especially if I'm pulling aggro or, or intentionally taking aggro. Uh, and part of that is because I just love the, the mobility of minstrels. Uh, like, this is one of the big features, and I just love abusing it. Uh, and partially, um, we, especially because we have abilities that can slow our opponents, it's possible to kite them in a, in a more effective way where they do stay out of range um, long enough where you're taking less damage. Uh, so it's fun and sometimes it's practical. Oh yes, that's another reason we're out here. Is we're getting steel tokens for the anniversary. Uh, Aaron Bart says that's the same reason I like hunters and bows on the move. Absolutely. Uh, and so if you like the mobility themed hunters who can move uh, uh, while their induction bars are going off, then that aspect will probably feel very similar over here. Let's go get the, uh, the treaty uh, quest. While we're out here, we'll have it for Saturday. Oh, wrenches are also good. Uh, this is a great place for tier seven ma uh, materials if you don't mind being attacked by giant things. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you like mobility, then I think you would really enjoy that aspect. It, it rings true in minstrels. Uh, if you like uh, a lot of shouty abilities, plenty of them in minstrels. If not, there's always the filter capability, which uh, I really enjoy being able to just filter out um, uh, items and uh, quests and sounds. It's great. Uh, and whoops, there's a tree there. Oh well. What else about minstrels? Minstrels. Um, yeah, if you're playing Minstrels, I do recommend getting the Minstrel Buff plugin that helps you keep track of your uh, ballads and anthems in a way that I just really struggled to, to grasp before I um, was using it and then modifying it. <laughs> and Bird says, Def desperately wish to filter the water leak sound. Yeah, uh, well, for anyone who doesn't know, um, when you are hearing a sound that you don't like, you can go ahead and record, and it'll tell you all the things that are playing right now until you hit the stop button. If you re-hit the record button, it's going to clear your old list and start a new list. So we can see um, all sorts of stuff when I started moving my mount. Um, and when Rose is mount. So we can see the water nearby is causing a waterfall layer bubble too large. <laughs> and we have some Troll Shawl, Rivendell, Del, Outdoor or Night sounds in the background, and Eisen, JB, whatever that is, and some other things. And so those are the ones that are happening, and if any of them are the ones you don't like, you just drag them over to be filtered either for this character or for your entire account. Very handy. Hard Zach perhaps jokes that you can mute other players, but it's true. If you really love running with a captain, but you don't like their captain screams, um, just find out which thing it is. Maybe ask them, hey, do that captain scream. Uh, find the one it is and just filter it and you won't hear it anymore. Uh, same thing with minstrels, I guess, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar with the Limite Gorge, once you've done the, the three basic quest lines here um, for basically the Ents, the Humans, and the Dwarves. Uh, then you can get uh, daily quests uh, to come back and continue getting uh, both Reputation of the Heroes of the Limelight Gorge, also Legendary Item Experience, uh, which I need to work on because I'm not yet full, uh, and either Silver or Golden Tokens of the Anduin. Okay, I really didn't have a lot more to do here. I feel like this has been a good uh, showing off of Minstrel Combat. And Brad, let me know if you had any more specific questions about uh, how minstrels work, but that's kind of the broad strokes. Lots of mobility, lots of range stuff, and a healthy assortment of um, uh, area effect damage uh, that makes it feel like you can hit a lot of things really fast. Uh, just for the curious, Call of Rome, um, I've increased the number of targets of several of these things through um, uh, traits. But with that being said, Calorame has uh, can target seven things. Rather, Velar only three things, which is very sad. 
Uh, wizards is eight targets. Um, and, oh, Traceries might also be involved in increasing the targets. Uh, Call of the Second Age, max targets five. And in fact, uh, one of the Traceries I really want, if I don't already have it, it would be a um, increased uh, number of targets. But we have, one of the downsides of being uh, max level, uh, what do we have, 75? Is that you just don't have a lot of space in your legendary item. Looks like I don't have a uh, number of targets increaser, but maybe I should get one of those, given how much I love that. Let's see. <laughs> and Brad says, very useful for silencing NPC loot players in the pony. Sure, yeah. Lord Zack says, do you have to mute individual race scream? Lord Zack, I would expect the answer is yes, because the impression I get is under the covers, imagine that there's a bazillion and one little mp3 files or WAV files or music sample files in uh, in the data somewhere uh, and it is just whenever it's time to activate a sound it just plays that little sample and so when you are muting something in fact let's both of us get down off our horses here because the, the the mounts make a lot of noise uh, and we're just going to stand here for a second. Let me go ahead and make noise. So, call the second age doesn't require a target. I forgot to hit record. Oops. Okay. Um, so, I've got a cat behind me. Cool. Um, so, we can see that among the five sound sounds that were played was skill female hobbit scream two, uh, and all the races, all the uh, uh, sexes, uh, have multiple scream uh, variations, right? You've probably heard this before. Uh, same thing if I do, I don't know how well the uh, sound is coming across in the stream, but if I do a charge, in fact, let's go ahead and record. So that was female hobbit roar three. Um, but there's also a five in there. Uh, so you just you have to pay attention to what's coming through and what things seem relevant. Obviously the frog is probably not relevant, but the, the female roar three and five, those seem relevant. Oh, that's funny. And that roar is divided into two different parts. Even though they always play together, um, there are two different samples there. Someone just did a laugh. So yes, if you of uh, if you're looking to block out screams, uh, you'll want to do that for all of the races. But if you have a couple of free character slots, you can always uh, do that yourself. Just log in with that character, do the abilities that you don't like, uh, and, and filter those. And it'll filter yours and others. Okay. Neftario asks, is Brandywine the most populated server? I think it is definitely one of the more populated servers but in my head, and I don't have a lot of details on this, but I feel like Evernight and Brandywine are both large servers. One of them is listed as a US server and one of them is listed as an EU server. Um, but I would guess of the US servers it's probably larger. Let's see, let me get rid of that. What, what are the servers? All right, Gladden, Landerval, up for... Is role playing are you? Uh, Crick Hollow, Brandywine, Arkenstone. I guess in my head, Brandywine's probably one of the larger ones there. But uh, each of the servers uh, is often known for different uh, community aspects. There's a large role playing group over on Laurelin, for instance. Uh, so even if you go to Brandywine with a larger server population, you might miss out on some of those uh, aspects or the music community of various servers. So knowing uh, what else besides the gameplay is of interest to you can be very helpful in picking a server or two. Hmm. Pablo says, minis have before more AoE skills. I could believe it. Uh, I know skills have changed over time, but one of the things I really like about minstrels and how they're set up currently uh, is that when you go into the warrior skald, uh, one of the abilities that you get is 
Oh, where is it? Um, I'm uncertain. <laughs> I'll have to look into it. Um, but your ballads reduce the cooldown of your calls and cries by one second. Uh, and so what the modern minstrels are very much encouraging you to do is to alternate between a ballad and a not ballad. Ballad and not ballad. Ballad and not ballad. And that's uh, for two reasons. A, you want to get as many ballads out there as you can. Let's, uh... Let's go find another tree. Uh, you want to get as many ballads out there as you can um, because they each one of them is reducing the cooldown of your calls and cries and all of these uh, uh, AOEs uh, or area effects are calls and cries. Cool, here's one of the basic ones. Um, and so you're, you're constantly reducing the cooldown of these effects for every ballad that you do. And also, uh, Redline Minstrels also get Uh, discordant ballads, which gives you a, an effect called War Speech, uh, which is going to increase every all the damage you do for a short span. And so we can see that reflected in the UI, UI here, this little uh, red bar. And so if you keep alternating between ballads and not ballads, ballads and not ballads, you're working those cooldowns, you're getting those cooldowns and a very satisfying ebb and flow, but you're also maximizing your war speech. Uh, war speech is a, an interesting one. If you already have three war speeches active, uh, when you do another war speech, it does not uh, drop off the oldest one or do a refresh. Uh, instead, it just doesn't do anything. And so you, if you do your ballads too fast, you actually miss out on the proper cycling of your war speech. So the game very much wants you to do uh, ballad, not ballad, ballad, not ballad. Are you available? This is not a one-person job. So the game very much wants you to do ballad, not ballad, ballad, not ballad. And if you do that, your war speeches keep uh, uh, are in a place to always uh, have three of them active, and your big AOEs that you're working on. Um, your uh, your big AOEs uh, get back as fast as possible. So even though Cry of the Wizards has a 30 second cooldown, in practice you should not be waiting 30 seconds for Cry of the Wizards. Um, you know, if you're if uh, if it takes maybe three seconds to do one of those cycles of ballad not ballad, then over the course of you know five of those uh, or ten of those, you you've decreased the uh, cooldown of. Uh, of Cry the Wizard substantially. And so if you're alternating between ballad and not ballad, and those not ballads include these Call of Armies, you're spacing them out in time as well. You don't just do big, 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 and then have to wait the cooldown for all of them. So if we uh, look at the stocking horn here, so if I do ballad, not ballad, ballad, not ballad, ballad, not ballad, ballad, not ballad. We can see I'm getting those uh, red lines uh, refreshed just as they drop off. So ballad, not ballad, ballad, and so on. A thousand one, a thousand two, a thousand three. So about three seconds. So every three seconds you're reducing the cooldown of all your uh, uh, cries and calls and cries by a second. And and yeah, so you have this ebb and flow of do a big thing, do a, a normal thing, do a big thing, do a normal thing. That really appeals to me. But it does mean uh, if you do just want to unleash and just do all of your big stuff in, uh, in a row, uh, that you can do that, but it means you're going to have a, a much longer um, recovery period after that uh, to where you can once again unleash all the big stuff. Um, Minstrels also have a really nice combo when you're on the run, where you can just do a Call to Fate and a Dissonant Piercing Cry. Dissonant Piercing Cry is an immediate, so you can just go boom boom. Um, and so you can unleash a lot of proportional damage, but they both have like a 10 second cooldown. So if you do that uh, right out, then you can't do that again for 10 seconds, um, or a little bit less if you start uh, getting your ballads in there. Anyway. Uh, all that to say, I really enjoy the feel of Minstrels, and it definitely feels different when I hop onto a Hunter. Ah, oh, Eldoleth has um, whitelisted the link you tried to share, Aaron Bard, so go ahead and try that again. Uh, looks like it's an overview of the different uh, servers. Cool. LegendaryCasual.com, Litro-Server-Guide. Cool, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Hello, Eldola. Thanks for managing that. Um, you, uh, 
you know the ways of Ubot much better than I do. I don't know how to whitelist things. Okay, well, I think uh, let's go sit on top of this hill. And if there's any other questions about combat, we'll be nearby, but otherwise we'll be out of the way of all the giant things. Because after all, this is nominally a stream about plugins. But as I always say, I do not mind uh, going off topic. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dismount because otherwise our mounts are going to keep on making noise. And we're going to look at the lovely Limlight Gorge. <laughs> Edeleth has been lurking off and on since Little Red Head Show and been quiet doing wiki stuff. Well, thank you so much for your service in the wiki community. I, uh, once upon a time, I let myself get absorbed doing a lot of wiki stuff, and then life just has gotten busy. And so I kind of had to choose wiki or plugins, and I just kept doing the plugins. Um, cool. So, we are looking today at, unless there's other questions that want to derail me, and that's fine too, uh, we are looking today at the Deed Tracker plugin. Specifically, we're looking at the problem of the fact that there are some deeds and quests with the same name. And as I mentioned earlier, a plugin can't know that you've completed a deed, but a plugin can see uh, in the quest uh, chat channel that you completed something. Unfortunately, internally, Lotro thinks of quests and deeds very much the same. Uh, and so quest and deed um, a progress status all goes through the quest chat channel. So you kind of have to figure out, is this talking about a deed or a quest? And sometimes it could be both. Uh, so what we were doing last time was setting our uh, location as far as the plugin is concerned to the north downs. Let's turn on verbose logging while we're at it. And what we're looking for is the warg slayer deeds. Now if we're in the north downs and we complete a deed called warg slayer, then it is most likely the warg slayer deed uh, of the north downs. That's why in this tell me which that was window, it is the first one and it's yellow. Uh, Little Redhead would like that to be also like a bigger font size, but uh, for one thing at a time. Oh, Aaron Bard says, thank you for the assist. Adela says, most official or Lotro wiki related links should go through fine, and others you have to ask for a permit. Oh, that's how you do that, cool. From the mod streamer, since we only have a limited number of white listing slots. Um, Neftaro has done a Discord command. However, there is no official Discord server for Lord of the Rings Online. Uh, there are plenty of fan Discord servers that you can find out there. Uh, I know there's at least four, but there's probably more than that. Um, but there's no official one, and so there's no uh, link to any specific one through a uh, chat command. Okay, so we need to complete a deed. The deed tracker will say, hey, here's all the deeds that could be given the ones that I know that you've completed already. So for instance, if we say, oh yeah, that was Ravani and Moria Workslayer, then next time uh, we complete a Workslayer deed, that one is ruled out because we've already completed it. Um, oh, and Elvis says, there's not an official one, but I'm one of the mods at a link and it is pretty friendly. Awesome, thanks Elvis. So we only are seeing uncompleted deeds, but there's also a quest with the name Warg Slayer that you can find in the North Downs. Especially annoying because there's also a deed in the North Downs called Warg Slayer. So you're going to have a conflict there. There's just no getting around it. And so what we can do is know that there is a quest by the name Warg Slayer. And if you complete that quest, we also know whether or not it's a repeatable quest. For instance, Eyes of the Enemy and the Trollshaws, you can repeat that daily. Uh, and it's the name of a deed in Moria, I think. Uh, Phil Gershon, maybe? And so, um, if it's a, a non-repeatable quest, then once you say you've completed it, cool, we'll save that status off. Uh, so we, we can exclude the quest from this long list of what Warg Slayer did you just complete. Awesome. And today what we're going to do is change how we save it when we uh, complete a quest. I'm going to click quest here. Great. 
uh, we can see it's no longer included on this list. Awesome. The specific, specific error that we had, the bug that we had last week that we were trying to address was that quest was not being taken into account. And so when the Northdown's uh, work slayer was completed, it was just automatically uh, completing the Angmar one. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I'm gonna take a little snip of that. And we'll see if we have time to dig into it later. Okay. Um, it's a subtle window and uh, I feel like I may have um, tweaked something just slightly the wrong way over this last week. So what does it look like when we've completed a quest? I'm gonna go ahead and unload the deep tracker and make sure our uh, file is saved and then come on in to um, a Windows Explorer and go to Documents, Lord of the Rings Online. We're going to go into Plugin Data and then go into Account and Server and All Characters. And that's going to let us uh, open up our character specific save file. Now, this is not going to have a lot here uh, because it's a brand new character, and in fact, I'm going to collapse down a few things. So, in our uh, when we've completed deeds, those go in the deeds section. If we've completed a quest, that goes in the quest section. Awesome. And we have a win, and we have uh, what was the method. All right, Mubot also would like us to know about the uh, lotro.com slash expansions page. Excellent. Uh, and again, things are on sale. So if you've been holding off getting things, there's some 75% discounts uh, for the anniversary that will help you get Minas Morgul and Mordor and some 50% and 25% off for newer content. Uh, and I'm not a salesperson, but those seem like some pretty good discounts. I think I bought them full price myself, but oh well. Okay. So um, this here is an internal number that uh, Lord of the Rings Online uses uh, to track quests or deeds, but it's not actually exposed in the Lotro API. That was retrieved from a separate tool. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to take into account files uh, in the version 3.0 that are using a deed ID instead of the quest ID and just convert them over. So. Oh, Nefaro says, I think I'm going to start as a lore master. Those are pet builds, I think. Yes, that is the class that has pets. Uh, and they have a variety of pets. Um, somewhat analogous to hunters in World of Warcraft, for instance. Uh, but they very much feel like more magic-y users who also have a pet bear or a pet bog crawler or a uh, craven or uh, possibly several others. I don't actually play lore masters very much. But yeah, if you're looking for a pet, oh, captains also have a pet, don't they? Um, they have a banner holder person that runs around with them. But I don't think those do combat so much as buffs, maybe? I'm well out of my league here. If it's not a minstrel or sometimes a guardian or a hunter, I, I don't. Uh, I, I go to the wiki. Okay, um, so what we want is we want an older version of this file. Uh, and it is useful to have files saved off so we can just keep copying them back and forth and back and forth. So what we want to do is come in into the documents and plug in along and we're going to go ahead and get version 3.0 to version 3.1 uh, And then my mind went blank. Conflicting quests. That's what we're doing. Conflicting quests. Cool. And so what we want is some version 3.0 files. Now I happen to have some of those. So I'm gonna go into my plugin data that I saved off before I started so that I don't accidentally trash it on stream. And Aphidil, we're gonna go ahead and copy that over here. We'll take a look at that. And we also need the care data, awesome. And so what that gives us is the care data. Uh, we can see 
some basic information, and also all of the characters it, it thinks it knows about. And I just want to get rid of those. I only want it to think about this one character. Awesome. And we've got our carried out of version. Great. Okay, and so um, what we want to look at is the quests here. And we can see uh, we have some good testing fodder here. We have five of those already completed. And so what we wanted to see is this file being pretty much exactly the same, except the keys here get swapped out for the correct ones. Okay. Um, in fact, to simplify this, we could delete things that we don't care about. For instance, all of these unclear deeds, let's, uh, let's get rid of them. It'll make comparing, comparisons of the file easier. Great, nothing's unclear. Um, character info, we'll just keep that there. Uh, the UI, we'll leave it for the moment. Uh, we got quests and the completed deeds. And this one is itself going to be massive a massive source of uh, problems. So we're just going to go ahead and nix it. Great. So we have a much simpler file. It's only 68 lines here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete those debug uh, flags as well. So what, we're, what we've done here is we've set up some uh, files where we can just go ahead and delete the existing ones, copy those in, and we're ready to go. We can just load deed tracker and boom. Though I do notice <laughs> that the completion window was trying to pop up, which is a little funny. So let's see if we can do any sort of a comparison here, or is it going to be all jumbled? It is going to be all jumbled, isn't it? That's okay. By eliminating most of the things there, it makes it possible to at least compare the files. Aaron Bard says, you do get a lot of pets on a Lord Master. Oh, and hobbits can be Lord Masters too now. Good point. Okay, so we have our testing files. And so what we're really looking for is load the files and on load, we're gonna do a conversion. Um, so let's go on in and see where that would happen. So there's two things that we're concerned about. Uh, we have prior save formats, and this is a file that only files that only get loaded when they need to. Uh, and so if you are on the current save file format, this file never gets loaded, and uh, the plugin just takes less memory that way. And that's a feature that I'm really trying to lean into more is if you've got stuff that only needs to run once in a long while, don't load it. Uh, load those files when you need them. Uh, you as a plugin can import additional files whenever you want to and it uh, there's no real time delay so unnoticeable time delay okay so we have ways to detect what uh, plugin version you are awesome so um, what we can see is and we're actually going to collapse this down um, if the carried out version is version 2, then do stuff. So what we'd want to do is, if carried out a uh, carried out a version equals version 3.0, then version 3.0 to version 3.1, end. And the reason why this isn't a one long if block, why it's separate if blocks instead of if else, 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 is just because if someone has an older version, like a version one, it's just much easier to go ahead and sequentially update that to version two, and then go ahead and update that to version three, and then update that to version 3.1, instead of trying to roll it all together. Remember it says, so your plugin can reference other code and load that in only as needed. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, let's take a look at what I mean. Um, so if we come in into the main uh, dot Lua, uh, save format update. We can see that if the version in the character data is not the uh, up-to-date version, then go ahead and first import 
the save format update file and then go ahead and call a function that only exists because we just loaded that file, uh, the update care data. And so let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. And similarly, in the save format update, uh, if the save file is present, then we go ahead and, oh wait, I could be misremembering. Let's find the import statement so I don't misremember. Ah, so if we're in, we're in version two and we need to update to version three, well, there's three specific files, version two, version two, version two, uh, that we're going to need. And if I'd been a cleverer person, I might have led with the version two instead of ending with the version two. Um, so that they all uh, sort together, but that ship has sailed. And so all of this information, and some of them are smaller files, and some of them are larger files, like this one is every deed, and a, and a look at table about how to go from the old one to the new one. But it's ridiculous to load that unless you actually need it. And so these conditional imports get them in, uh, and then we can use them uh, in the prior save formats namespace. But those import statements never run, and thus uh, we get to this code. And we only get to this code if we've conditionally loaded save format updates. And so I feel much better about having all of this code. Uh, you might hear the, the term code bloat, but this code never gets loaded unless it's needed. Dyra says, what language is that? If you may ask, you absolutely may. That's what we're doing here. Uh, this is Lua, which is a scripting language that is commonly used uh, as a plugin language uh, and this is Lua 5.1 specifically, if you're interested. And so you'll see many games out there. Uh, two of the ones that come to mind are, of course, World of Warcraft and Lord of the Rings Online that use Lua as the language that you write plugins or add-ons, add as I think they're called over there. Yep, Lord Zach says, well, also uses Lua. Absolutely. I, I think Factorio also uses Lua. It's, it's a common language. It's an easy language relatively to learn uh, and uh, tends to, to look, uh, I think, maybe a little bit more fluent than some brace languages uh, where you see a, an expression like if something, then something else, end. And even for people who don't have a lot of experience with programming, maybe it can be kind of understood that we're saying if this thing is true, then we want to do some stuff. Or uh, in the more compound version of that statement, if this thing is true, then we want to do some stuff. Otherwise, if it was not true, we want to do some different stuff. And in a more uh, C-derived language, that might be written if, you know, thing, uh, brace, uh, open brace, close brace, uh, and you might also have like an else that, and you know, this is fine. It's just another way of writing the same thing. But uh, in the C, C++, C Sharp, Java world, instead of the more, let's just use a keyword to do it instead. <laughs> Dyer says, I can't believe I started playing Lotro one month ago and started trying to code one week ago, and now I randomly found a stream that shows both. Yeah, well, welcome. I'm here uh, most every uh, Tuesday, uh, and I stream about plugin development, or I get sidetracked and stream about minstrel combat, whatever. I'm flexible. Okay, so if you have any questions, Dyrus, uh, feel free to bring them up about Lotro plugins, whatever. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and look at what we're doing here. So what we're looking at is the main character data file has um, has a, a, a version. And recently I decided maybe it would make sense for each of the character specific files to also have a version. So that's in there. And I hope that doesn't come back to haunt me. Uh, but there's a version in the main file that says, I think all of these other files are at this version. And so if that is not what our current version is, we want to do something about that. And also let's make sure we're not, cool, not using that over there. Just had a thought. Okay, so the current care data file version, if we come in and edit that to be version 3.1, 
then anything that's at 3.0, which is the real current version, is going to trip this uh, right here. And so what we're going to want to do is then have a, a block of code in here that handles this case. And that's what we just added here. So if it's equal to version 3.0, then we need to do some stuff. And I'm actually going to steal the opening debug statement. Uh, and we're going to update the uh, character wide value here to 3.1. And everything else is. That's a good idea. Let's trigger the save of that uh, string. You know, I like that message as well. Anything fo following two uh, hyphens is going to be a comment, and that's why it's a colored green in the code editor here, which is just Visual Studio Code for those who are not familiar. It's a free editor you can download from uh, Microsoft, uh, and it has syntax highlighting for a wide number of languages, in this case, including Lua. So version 3 has been converted to version 3.1. Awesome. That's just a comment for us. The, the uh, computer does not care what we put there. OK, so besides a basic debug statement, what else? Well, there's some import files, and we do need one of those. Um, we need one to track the old ID and the new ID that we're updating. I'm not sure what that's going to look like yet, um, but it's probably going to just be integer to integer. Uh, if you find this, replace it with that. And so let's start with that and see what that gives us. So uh, conflicting quests IDs version three. Okay, so uh, lookup table between v three point oh deed IDs and v three point one quest IDs. Cool. And what are we calling these things? I don't even know. Indices lookup, sure. Conflicting quests lookup. I don't. I'm not too worried about the name and inflicting the global namespace because again, I'm looking to only have this run once per server for a given user, and so it'll run and then this will not be loaded future. So I'm not trying to be too creative with this uh, entry into the global namespace. It's not going to be there for very long. All that matters is it's different from any of the other global variables. Uh, and this probably is. However, uh, if you're using an editor like we are, uh, instead of just text files, you can easily just say, find all the uh, references of this in my workspace. And we can see just the one, so we're clear. I don't think Lua will actually tell you if you tromp on a global variable with a different um, uh, initialization like this. So it's good to kind of be your own uh, guardian there. OK, so what we're looking at is something that looks like this, where if we see the number 1, uh, we uh, uh, actually want it to be the number 2, and so on. But what is this going to look like? Uh, what, what are all the inputs? Well, I don't actually know. Uh, I have source control, so I could back out. I could back up to what it was before this last week when I changed it. But sometimes it's just easier to go download the thing. So uh, we're going to go over to the Lotro interface site, search for D Tracker. All right, it's here. Thank you to 71,000 downloads. That's pretty cool. And we're going to go ahead and download this. And that's going to give us the uh, version 3.0.2. Cool. So once it's downloaded, we can go ahead and extract, just like normal, and come on in here. And what we're looking for is in the data files the conflicting quests. And we just want to have this available as a reference. Great. OK. So these values in this file are what we want. And you know what? We can take advantage of some multi-editing to extract those out. 
multi-editing is super useful. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just copy everything into a, its own um, a buffer here in Sublime Text. If you don't have a an editor that supports multi-editing, I really recommend getting one. It's uh, super useful. And what we want is every line that starts like this. Except for that number. Um, so what we want is every line that looks like that. It starts with a brace of a specific point, has a certain indentation, and we can see that we found uh, probably all the ones that we care about. So we're just going to come on in here, and yeah, we definitely found all the ones we're looking at. And at this point, we have a multi-selection. Uh, and now we can uh, edit the cursor location, and it will uh, follow through to every one of them. So if we go ahead and uh, select up, they've all moved up one line. If we select home, they've gone to the beginning of the line. Um, and we can go ahead and select uh, shift end. Now that we've selected all those lines, I'm going to skip that brace. I'm going to copy this multi-select and paste it into a new buffer. And what we can see is we've just gone ahead and extracted the 39 uh, IDs here. And uh, we're good. Uh, that's that's the first part of what we wanted. Now what we need is what they're going to turn into. But uh, let's um, sort of save our position here. Um, these are all going to map to the same thing for just a moment. And that'll let us come on in here into the conflicting quest lookup table and get something meaningful here. And Brett says, that is very slick editing. Thank you. I highly recommend anyone who ever has to do any text manipulation for their job or hobbies, uh, try this out, see if you can get comfortable with it. It takes a little while to get really comfortable with it, but just play with things that don't really matter and then you'll be ready for the things that do. Uh, but I could have manually gone through and copy pasted each of those indices, but why, right? Like, um, why not just not do that <laughs> instead? So I'm gonna go ahead and close that temporary buffer I'll, I'll close the old conflicting quest as well, because what we want to come in, to, uh, it, we want to do is come into the new conflicting quests, uh, and instead these are broken out by. Oh, well that was foolish of me. I sorted them by alphabetical order for lack of a better purpose. Oh no, never mind. They also appear below. Great. So we're going to go ahead and copy this out as well. Cool. Aaron Bard says, and it's called Sublime Text. Yes, this is Sublime Text. If you're ever looking at it, and it's not the only editor that can do this, um, but let's see. Didn't actually mean to report a bug. Documentation. Okay, apparently it is sublimetext.com that it can be found at. Uh, and really it's just one of a um, sublime text can be found at. We'll just paste that into chat there. This is just one of a thing that is better than your basic notepad. Um, so I think Notepad is super useful sometimes, but Sublime Text just has some really nice features. For instance, if you close Sublime Text and then you open it again, all of your stuff is still there, right? And like, um, not not counting for crashes. Whereas Notepad, if you close it, uh, well, it's gone. Hope you saved it. Um, and so there's just some very nice uh, features, like why why would it not come back even if you didn't save it? Yeah, Lord Zach does uh, Notepad++. Plus. He also points out Visual Studio Code can do multi-line editing. That's absolutely true. I'm very used to the keyboard shortcuts for Sublime Text, uh, but I will do multi-editing sometimes in uh, Visual Studio. So if I, if I hold Control Alt and hit down here, we can see I'm starting a multi-editing block right here. Um, but I'm, I'm very used to uh, the mechanisms um, from Sublime Text as well. So yeah, the point is get yourself an editor that supports it and then get comfortable doing it. Um, that's that's all. And all of these ones mentioned uh, Sublime Text, Visual Studio Code, Notepad++, they're just part of a new brand of uh, editors that are just better than Notepad. And uh, yeah, so if you are a regular user of Notepad, and I certainly have been that in the past, consider something better. 
Uh, one of the reasons I'm not doing my edits inline here in Visual Studio Code, though, and I do this most of the time anyway, is um, multi-edits can go awry. Multi-selections uh, can go awry. The less things you have to kind of pattern match against, the more likely you are to just get the things you want and not other things. Uh, and so I will tend to take the chunk that I want to multi-edit, put it into a buffer, do my edits there so that um, it, I know I only affected what I want, and then bring it back into wh wherever I'm going, Visual Studio Code or a different Sublime Text. <laughs> this says, that's the thing, efficiency over religiously using just one ID. Use whatever you're proficient in. Yeah, now, being proficient in multiple ones has its own benefit, but if there's one that you're just like, man, when I use this thing, I'm at 100%, and these other ones, I'm at 50%, cool, just, you know. Uh, as long as you're, you uh, feel really comfortable in one of them, you can get by in the other ones. Because it's super easy to just copy stuff into Sublime Text, modify it, and copy it back to wherever you're going. Do it all the time. Okay, so here are the new IDs. And same thing, we're looking for something that we can kind of latch onto. So I'm going to do the same thing where I select the brace and the spacing of one line and hope that I was consistent and how I made those lines? And the answer is yes. This is where consistency can be very nice. If your white space and everything you're doing uh, matches from one place to another, it allows for these multi-selections to uh, be much easier to, uh, to grab. So wh what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab these numbers. And one thing I don't uh, know how to do in Sublime Text is to take a multi-select from one buffer and uh, use it natively in a different buffer, but it's fine. I can just re-implement re the multi-select here. So what we're going to do is take our multi-select copy and paste it into a multi-select. And when you do that correctly, um, you, what you should get is that each line just replaces the line it's going into. However, it seems like I did not do it correctly the first time. So let's try that one more time. Wait a second. Oh, that's going to get me into trouble because it's I did some edits. Oh, no. Oh, I might not be able to, to finagle my way out of this one. Because this went from DID to quest ID, um, all, all seven or so of the Warg Slayer deeds got collapsed into a single entry, which was kind of the whole point. Where did it go? Warg Slayer. <coughs> yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. All seven of these that got collapsed into a single entry, uh, but their other ones are still here. Oh, I think I am not going to be able to get away with this the way I was hoping to. That's okay. Yeah, I need that file again. Okay, so what we want to do is grab the name of the thing. Okay, so we have this. Oh, there we go. Um, so what we want is the names of each of the thing, not actually uh, the extra lines. And we want to incorporate this in uh, to this entry here. So I can, I can identify what all the, the source IDs were trying to be. Okay, so we're gonna take those 39, Hopefully that means we have 39. Yes, we do. Perfect. And what we want to do is go ahead and do a multi-select here. Uh, and bring that on up. So each one of these lines now has... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at chat. Much as I just don't use an editor that you crash every 10 minutes. Yeah, you, you want to... If it, you're using a text editor for like... A, you know, as a fundamental foundation of what you're doing, make sure it's stable. Yeah, Sublime Text, I tend not to update when it's like, do you want to update a new release? Is that, I'll just wait. Other people can be the guinea pigs. It's fine. Um, okay, so we know what we're coming from and going to. It is entirely possible that we can't make this easily work. So Trouble Storm, what we can do is take the first number of them possibly until we get to works there. And so <coughs> let's 
see. I need the new version. Okay, so up to making a note for myself there. Um, let's go ahead and grab up to the Warg Slayer and see what we think about that. Because what we're really looking for is two things now. I want to double check the name of it uh, and the ID. And so we're going to go ahead and bring those on over and I didn't want all that white space. Okay, there we go. And I don't actually want all this extra stuff, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Cool. So what we're kind of interested in is, um, do these line up? Trouble and Tuckerel, Storm, Stand, Thievery, Attack of Dawn, Defense, Icy Crevasse, Strike, Protectors, Breach, Assault, Battle, Rescue. Awesome. What's going on with this one? I see. We're going to go ahead and fix that. That was supposed to be perfect picnic. I should probably have that to-do item somewhere else. <laughs> Zach says some software will work better on some OS CPU etc there's no perfect ones yeah if, if I ever try to switch to a computer where Sublime Text doesn't work I'm going to be very sad I, I really understand those people who, who cling to VI or Vim for, or Emacs for so long because if you build a decade or three building up the muscle memory uh, for all the little uh, shortcuts and, and nooks and crannies and then someone's like well why don't you switch over to this other one it's slightly better and you're like not for me it's not everything I do on that is going to be 10 times slower <laughs> uh, and I feel like uh, I'm, I'm getting that same way with Sublime Text where uh, there's so much I can easily do here that sometimes I'll be working in Excel or I'll be working in something else and just like pop it into Sublime Text do the manipulation I need done you know 20 seconds uh, we have a, f a friend who sometimes needs uh, that kind of manipulation done on text. Was like, oh, can you do this thing? And I'm like, yeah, for me, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience, as long as I have access to Sublime Text where I can do this thing. Uh, if I had to, to make do in some ed other editor, I'd say, okay, searching the menus for the thing I know is probably possible, but I just don't know that it's, oh, of course, it's Alt F3. Like, why would it not be Alt F3? It's always an Alt F3. Uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, there, there's a little bit of that. If, uh, if I had to do that sublime text, I would be sad. Okay, so perfect picnic. Doom of Karis Galebron. Um, eyes of the enemy, leave no one behind. Battle for Asgillia, time and need tools. Best defense, shot in the dark. Baggins' birthday, Hauntaboro, and discovering the descendant. Okay, all of that looks really good. And so what we want to do is go ahead and just take these values, and what we're, we're just going to use this dash dash as a shortcut to get every other line, and then come down to the next line and copy those in. And so what we're going to do is the uh, same thing, do a multi-edit of these 25 lines, and cut them so that we can come on up here uh, and paste them into these lines. And we know we stopped just short of the work uh, slayer ones, and so that's great. Um, unfortunately, the work slayer ones are kind of mixed in uh, because these were sorted uh, by by deed and not by quest. Um, that's okay. We're gonna make it work. So. Um, So what we're going to pull is all of the other ones, and these are probably going to require a little bit more of a manual fix-up. So Circle of Despair, um, all right, Work Slayer, I'm going to go ahead and put all the Work Slayers together. Uh, I think it's going to make it a little bit easier. All right, Work Slayer.
Great. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab these IDs. And hopefully we're going to see the same number of them as where we're going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. We're just going to do a multi-select, come on in, and fix those. And right, so that just leaves us with one, which is the works layer. Uh, and that one's the easiest one because they all go to the same ID. All of these different deed IDs map on the same quest ID, uh, and which was the whole point of this thing. And so we can come on in here, and using our uh, single uh, uh, clipboard, we can do a multi-paste in, get the same value on multiple lines. And so what we have here is all the work slayer uh, possibilities are now this same one. And we want to keep in mind that we might have accidentally stored the successful completion of North Downs work slayer under this ID and not this ID. Uh, and so when we're coming in, if any of one of them is completed, uh, we should take that information, ideally. Okay, so we have here our table of lookup, uh, lookup table, and we're going to go ahead and pull that back in to the conflicting IDs uh, table that we're defining here. And whenever possible, if you can include comments uh, on IDs like this, your future self is just going to be so happy. Uh, because this value, I don't know what it is. And this value, I don't know what it is. But here, uh, I, can, I can see what's going on. Uh, in fact, in the name of conflicting quest uh, lookup, what we really want is deed ID to quest ID lookup. Uh, and that tells us what we're really doing. Is on the left side, we've got a deed ID. On the right side, it's a quest ID. And uh, and it's fine that this name is hideous because we only are going to ever use it in one place. Uh, ideally, when you're naming your things, you've got to compromise between description and uh, and usability. But if you're using a thing for one niche thing, uh, description uh, can take take over. While I was talking, made my throat a little sore. I think I will take a lozenge. Okay, Paolo says, are you living in US or Europe? Uh, I am in the Netherlands in Europe, uh, and uh, fortunately our internet service is such that I don't really notice the, uh, the, ex the any sort of additional lag from distance. We uh, frequently play, play with people in America and when there's any sort of a, a server performance issue, lag issue, it hits all of us the same. <clears throat> oh, hey. Probably should have noticed that error message. All right. Let's uh let's hide some of these windows that have popped up. Um All right, so there was an error in Cardata plugin near Affidel. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, grabbing a fresh uh, buffer for Sublime Text. Ah, somehow I messed up, uh, missed a uh, end quote there. That will not go well. Okay, no errors. Pavel thinks that the uh, network performance uh, is worse in other parts of Europe. I can't speak to that. I've only got experience with playing from being in the US and playing from being in the Netherlands. You think Netherlands is nice? I agree. I really like it here. I'm glad the Dutch government lets us live here because uh, Little Redhead and I are both 
from America originally, and so it is only by the grace of the Dutch government that we get to, to stay here. So, thanks Dutch government. Okay, so fix that little bug in our test file. And what we want to do is write some code that takes advantage of this lookup table that we have. We have a table that says, given this value, we want to use this value. Now we just need to figure out how to use it. Okay. So what we want to do is in the save format update file, we're looking to load each character. Uh, and there's going to be some similarity here. So in fact, let's go ahead and copy some stuff. So what we want to do is ask why that's indented differently. There we go. Okay. So what we want to do is make sure we're importing um, this conflicting quest IDs version 3. And I should really rename that to version 3.0. Um, assuming the dot is OK for a path here. Because just calling it version 2 or version 3 ignores these incremental updates, uh, which not a fan. Causing me problems. Uncertain. Okay, we're going to go ahead and be uncertain about. Fascinating. Okay, the IntelliSense is suggesting that a dot in the file name is just not going to work, and I am curious if that's true. Mm, seems like it works. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come look and see at what uh, was produced. So we can see in the main file we're at uh, version uh, 3.1. Awesome. No surprise there. And in uh, in the character specific file, we can see we're also at 3.1. Awesome. But I really don't want my um, text editor complaining at me. Uh, and so I think we'll go ahead and just uh, remove the decimal. And if I really wanted it, I could go ahead and have an underscore. But we'll just um, remove the decimal would be version 3.0. And I will probably um, dislike that later. We'll see. So what we want to do is mimic what we're doing here before, which is um, for each character in the index, we're going to try to load its file, save a backup, and then do whatever it is we need to do. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and update from 3 to 3.1. Great. Um, load each version 3 character file. Okay, so we're debugging that. Awesome. Uh, save a backup of 3.0. Uh, this is version 3.0 backup. And convert in memory to 3.1 structure. Awesome. Now, here's, here's what we want to do is we know that the in memory structure. Uh, for quests should be um, that's weird why was it so empty I'm uncertain okay so for each entry in quest what we're looking at doing 
is uh, saving it in uh, with a new index. And that's that index is already there. Uh, maybe even if it is already there, shouldn't matter. So what we want to do is iterate through. Uh, just like we have done before. Uh, so we're going to see something like for i in pairs uh, quests. And for right now, we're just going to take a look at what that output looks like. Uh, so debug i, and we'll just concatenate that in. Cool. Let's pause uh, and Take a look at that. We're going to go ahead and copy these in. Come back into the game and load. And we're going to pay attention in here. We can see here are the eyes that are being processed. And what we're hoping is that those line up with the values in quests here. So we get 7049. Great, we see it. Um, one, two, five, three, got it. O, oh, oh, four, great. O, oh, two, two, awesome. And eight, three, eight. Cool. So all of the indices here are showing up as our I variable. Awesome. We're going to take that and plug it into the lookup table. Okay. So get the, uh, get the quest ID based on the deed ID. And what we're going to do to make that easier is we're going to actually rename this to deed ID. Cool. Uh, and we could even go ahead and update our debug statement to match. Cool. So we have that. And what we really want to do is uh, get prior or save formats dot whatever this thing is. And we're going to look it up based off of deed ID. So if, let's just make sure that such an entry even exists. <laughs> then, I feel like our neighbors are preparing for Koning's doc because they're making a lot of noise back there. <laughs> um, and you know what? We're going to make a local lookup entry equals. Uh, and we're 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 gonna simplify all this because this is this is um, terabad. Okay, so now we have a local variable. So if this thing exists, then we want to go ahead and do stuff. Uh, process the uh, process the update. So local uh, quest ID equals lookup entry. I should actually just call that quest ID. Okay, so what are we doing with this quest ID? Uh, what we really want to do is make a new entry. So what we'd like to have is quests uh, and we're going to pass quest ID equals um, deed ID. So we're just copying that information over. And then we're going to set this equal to nil so it no longer ends up uh, being serialized on out. Now, the real question is, this this kind of a reference thing, it doesn't do deep copies necessarily, but since we're trying to do a move, not a copy, that kind of, that works for us. But we, we do need to test it. But that's the general idea, is um, let's go ahead and say replacing deed ID with quest ID and get that. And just in case, 
we can go ahead and output that else info could not find corresponding quest ID for deed ID and we'll just go ahead and spit that out all right so that's the basic idea we go through each one of these quests uh, each one of these entries in quest and say given this it should actually have an entry and so what we do is make a new entry uh, with the old uh, um, information and set the old information to nil so that is now nil and that's the idea uh, and when we do that uh, when that is serialized back out, the serializer will ignore nil entries, uh, and so it acts like it's uh, deleting it. Uh, and so that's what I think should happen. Let's uh, let's see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reset. Oh, make sure we've unloaded because otherwise it's just going to write these things back out anyway, overwriting all of our work. And that what we want to do is go ahead and load this and keep an eye on our output. Okay, could not find corresponding. That's uh, concerning, because I thought we were not going to see that at all. What we want to do is come in, in here. First, we're going to start. And corresponding for deed ID. Oh, oh no. Of course, I'm mutating the thing as I'm iterating through it. Never a wise idea. Um, for some reason, I was thinking the pairs would be executed first and we could just mutate in place. Uh, that's not going to work. So, what we need is a local new quests equals a table. Uh, and so what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and say new quests, quest ID equals this thing. And at the end, uh, instead of setting a single item uh, entry to null, we're just going to go ahead and do the whole thing. Quests equals new quests. Okay. That way, all of our changes uh, happen after we're done iterating through the uh, collection, and that will just make life much easier. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Okay, so we can see <laughs> we're updating from 3.0 to 3.1. We process the five things. We don't add things that will then get processed. Life is better. And what we're going to see, especially when we unload here, uh, is we're going to move from the original version here, quests, to this new version, quests, and ideally it's all going to match up. So the one that was completed at 15, 18, we're going to come in here and just take a look at that. Cool. That was Little Wonders. Hang on a sec. I gotta find that comment and. Uh... Okay, it's only here. Good. I'm getting rid of it. Um. Why don't I believe that? All right. Okay, so that was Little Wonders, and we can see that 0838 should be 2762. 0838, 2762. Now, one of the problems with comparing uh, save file output like this is that there is no ordering uh, of table serialization. If it happens to be the same order twice, it's just lucky. Uh, 
but ultimately uh, when a table is serialized like this uh, all, all you can expect is all the elements will be there but you can't expect what the order is going to be so one of the things we can do is just uh, be nice to ourselves and temporarily reorder things so this 15 uh, well the 1356 uh, here we can just come on down here and say you know what we're just gonna move that first uh, and then the 21 19 we're just going to go ahead and move that second so you can do a side-by-side -side comparison if you want uh, but it's manual because the next time this file is written out it gets overwritten and again the ordering is will appear random um, under the covers I suspect it's not actually random uh, that it's just based off of a um, hash table but it might as well be random for our organic brains cool so this is what it uh, would look like if the ordering had been the same. And so what we can do is just go ahead and select the one and select the other for comparison, pop it open, and down at the quest we can see uh, the only things that really changed uh, were the, uh, uh, the keys. Uh, but the values, the values uh, stayed the same, the keys changed, uh, that's awesome. And we can go ahead and put that next to this uh, table here and just kind of manually convince ourselves that everything is good. So, 7049 should be 7046, great. 1253 should be 9266. And we can see that's working just fine. The logic uh, is uh, performing the way we wanted it to. Awesome. So that gives us some confidence that if that you had any of these completed quests, we're going to go ahead and um, train, uh, convert that over into the new system, uh, where instead of tracking it by the deed, we're just tracking it by the quest itself. And that's especially going to help in this case where seven different deeds point at the same quest. And we only care about that quest once, not seven times, which is what we were doing. Which was a bug I hadn't even realized was there until we started looking at this other un, un, uh, seemingly unrelated bug. So, neat. Okay. So, what have we done? We have said, hey, if you are version 3.0, then we want to go ahead and upgrade, upgrade you to 3.1. What does that mean? First of all, we like making backups because you can always make mistakes when you're doing uh, file conversions. Uh, and uh, yeah, I recommend this. These files are not large and modern disk sizes are large enough that it's, it's worth making backups. So we go ahead and do that. We load in the existing file, we save it out, um, and we should have a timestamp in there as well. Yep, the now string is uh, going in there. Um, where is the now string manufactured? Great, up at the top. Um, so I realized recently that I really just wanted to have a timestamp in this file name because I was worried about the idea of backup files being overwritten with different backup files and losing data in the process. So each one of these should have the version that it's backing up and also the date that it was backed up on. That's easy enough to do. You can get the time, you can format it with a, a format string. Um, and so doing a date time format like that is pretty straightforward and recommended for this kind of thing, I guess. I'm currently recommending it. Okay, so uh, we want to go ahead and collapse down some of these other converters and cool so after we've saved our file uh, our backup file we now have the confidence that we can go ahead and mess those things and not uh, not cause any data loss so for each of those elements in the quests table we go ahead and save the, a reference to that data in the new table and then finally overwrite the old table with the new table. And all along the way we go ahead and update the version that we're expecting in the character file and in the global file uh, to 3.1. 
One of these days, I hope to pay more attention to the the version in the character specific file. So that if you had a partial update, or if you had a uh, you know someone sent their character file from a different system that was a different version, that was something we could pay attention to and be like, oh okay, if you have a version two file uh, in the midst of a bunch of version three one files, let's just fix that. Um, that day is not today, but we're set up for that kind of a thing. Okay, so we get to the end of our update function. Uh, and at that point, we should not be called a second time. If we go ahead and load the deed tracker now, we can see that we don't go through this updating process. We don't try to upgrade a save file format from 3 to 3.1 because we're already there. So we know that part is going well too. Awesome. And then finally, uh, we can test it. Uh, we know we have some of those completed uh, deeds, so we can come to North Downs. Um, and deed tracker thinks you move from offline to North Downs, great. Uh, and then we can go ahead and uh, complete Warg Slayer. And when we do that, there's also a quest with the same name to complete that instead. That was what I was hoping to not happen because yes, we've completed that, or have we? So let's come on back in here uh, to Warg Slayer and get this ID here. Fascinating. What did I have completed? All right, perfect picnic, great. Haunted Burrow, okay. Baggins' birthday. Eyes of the Enemy, naturally. And Little Wonders. I wonder... Well, first of all, I'm sure I've completed a Warg Slayer in the North Downs, but I wonder if the recording of that didn't work for some reason. But you know what? We can go ahead and create our own entry here. for testing purposes. So we're just gonna make this, um, yeah, why not today? Um, 21.58, there we go. So what I really wanna do is unload, go ahead and reset, bring it back in, and now we have six conversions and what we're looking for is this 4427. And we got it. So if we come back in and set our location to North Downs, and also uh, set the uh, complete of Warg Slayer, there we go, the quest no longer shows up. That's what we were hoping for. And so same thing, if I come back in here, Uh, and remove this final entry here. I'll save it off so that I can uh, get it back. Copy those in. Great. And to load this up. So what we're looking for now is uh, North Downs Warg Slayer. We're going to complete that. And just for kicks, we're going to say Moria is done. It no longer shows up. Awesome. We're going to say Dunlin is done. We're very productive. Uh, and you know what? We just went ahead and finished up the North Downs deed. Cool. Uh, and we've also completed the North Downs quest. Awesome. So we don't see that anymore. And if we unload, what we should hopefully see uh, in this updated file is the that quest save 
So what was it? 4427, we see it, we see the timestamp, awesome. So we're getting that saved correctly and we're getting it saved with the new version, uh, the, the new ID style. Cool, we can load it back in. Uh, location and complete a works layer and awesome. Now this is a weird one. Um, this logic should have auto-completed Angmar because we think we know where we are and we think there was only one deed where we are or immediately adjacent to where we are. So border border crossings aren't an issue. Uh, so this is um, not right. What we're going to do is say <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, bug while testing other bug fixes. Finish or down deed and quest. Then com uh, complete work slayer <coughs> and Angmar isn't auto selected. Cool. So just record that for later. Now we have hit uh, the normal end of the stream time here. So I think now's a great time to get any last minute questions, comments, concerns into chat uh, while I am uh, winding down here. And then if we can talk about them this week, we will. And otherwise, uh, hopefully we can get to it next week. Okay. So just extend, uh, continuing to do this, let's go ahead and do Misty Mountains. Let's see Southern Mirkwood. And ideally, at this point, if I complete something, it is Work Slayer. Awesome. And if I, just for one more time, if I complete something, we can see Deed Tracker did not find an uncompleted deed matching that. Aaron Bard says, Thank you for all your helpful answers. Have a great week. You too. Thanks for being here and uh, thanks for uh, jumping into chat like that. Okay, so there's definitely some stuff in here that is done and completed and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to, I think, dig into that when I have a little more attention to spare for it um, after the stream sometime this week. And then if I can sort that out, then we'll be uh, seeing a release of version 303 of Deed Tracker uh, with some of the incremental changes since the last one. Awesome. Done, done for now. Go ahead. Yeah, cool. Checking in chat. Is there a way to stop unloaded plugins loading automatically when you load the game? I have some plugins I only use occasionally, so I don't want to remove them. But every time I log on, they load and it's annoying me. So I have two answers for you. First of all, in the plugin manager, uh, there's an automatically load for drop down for each plugin. And we can see right now, the game will not try to load this plugin for any of my characters. But if I really wanted Affidil and Deef to have this automatically, I can select them. And then once you have um, exited the game, that uh, setting will uh, successfully exit. So like you can't just like force quit it. Uh, that setting gets saved out. And then uh, in the future, when you're loading it in, um, if I log in as Affidil or Deef, it should automatically load that plugin. For everyone else, I will have to manually load it in. And so what you might find is if you go to your plugin manager, maybe um, maybe all characters is selected and you didn't mean that, and maybe you wanna deselect that uh, because you wanna choose to manually load things through the plugin manager uh, or, key, or um, uh, chat shortcuts. Uh, so that would be the first thing. The second thing is there are ultimate alternate plugin managers out there. Let me... Uh, pull up um, a specific reference. That's my interfaces. I know I did a patch for one at some point. Bootstrap. Um, bootstrap plugin manager. Okay, so the Bootstrap plugin manager is a, a different plugin manager. And it is, I believe, has the ability to not load any plugins when you first load, and then go ahead and go through the list and manually load them, or maybe load them all in one go. Uh, and that can be really useful if you're just bipping back and forth between characters because 
you just want to do ingredient crates or whatever, and you don't really want to go, you know I'm only going to be there for two minutes, it's not worth loading all the plugins, uh, then having a system that understands the idea of these are all the plugins I want to load, but I don't want to load them until sometime after I've logged in, this is, uh, this is an interface, uh, a plugin that you could use instead of the built-in plugin manager. But if you don't want to go through that trouble, you just want to use the built-in plugin manager, Okay, checking says, just checked, yep, I had my character set in that drop down for those plugins. Never knew that was even there, so Lord knows how that got set. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it's, by default, it's always off, but who can say? <laughs> um, he also says, if anyone has a question about the list of plugins you scroll through, these plugins will, yeah, these plugins will always show up as long as they're in your plugins folder. Uh, there's no way to, to hide these from this list. If, if they're available to be loaded uh, in Lord of the Rings Online, then they will show up in this list. Uh, a a alt alternate plugin could have options to hide. I'd, I'd, I have no idea if Bootstrap does have an option to hide, but a, a plugin could have an option to be like, hide these from my normal list. And I think that would be really useful for reloaders and for um, maybe some other niche uh, things. Um, there's a show all button, so maybe there's a way to hide. Hmm. Um, anyway, so yeah, I thought the Bootstrap um, plugin manager was really interesting idea uh, that whole if I'm just going to log in for two minutes what's the point of loading all these plugins um, yet I still want to be able to load all these plugins if, if I choose to what a great question thank you so much checking for asking I hope that makes your life a little bit less stressful uh, plugins are great but sometimes you just don't want them in your way <laughs> um, the easiest way if you have plugins loaded that you don't want to have unloaded um, you can type in, let me go ahead and bring this down. If you do slash plugins space list, any plugin that has something in these parentheses after, let me go ahead and, um, no, that's not gonna work. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and see if I can load any of these other ones. Okay, so if you do slash plugin space list, if something appears after the version, then it's possible to unload just that specific apartment, which often corresponds one to one with a plugin. So I could uh, p slash plugins, space uh, unload, space deed tracker, and the deed tracker apartment will be unloaded. Uh, and then if we do a, a plugins list, we can see just one in the global apartment and one in the minstrel buff apartment. Apartments are not the same. Hey, the Green Eyed Gamer has a raid coming in. What a coincidence. I was just about to shut down. Uh, anyway, so um, apartments are not the same as plugins. One or more plugins can be in an apartment, but it is very common for plugins that need to be unloadable to be in their own apartment. So we can see minstrel buff two is in the minstrel buff plugin uh, apartment. So if we do, do slash plugins unload minstrel buff, then that unloaded the apartment minstrel buff, which happened to only have the plugin minstrel buff two. But more than one plugin can exist in an apartment, so it's not, um, so it could be more complicated than that, but it is generally just a one-to-one -one, uh, most of the time. Anything that did not have an apartment listed after that version, we can see Opaque Quest Tracker isn't a part, uh, is in the global apartment. There's no way to unload that without unloading all the other ones. So, um, slash plugins unload, we'll, get, we'll unload it, but it'll also unload everything else. So if you're looking to unload a specific one plugin, uh, sometimes the easiest thing to do is just log out, uh, update your um, automatically load for, and log back in. Okay, well, welcome uh, the Green Eyed Gamer and all the people coming in as raiders. Uh, it's super awesome to see you here. Amusingly, I was just shutting down for the day. We were just doing some development on the Deed Tracker plugin, uh, and specifically the problem that sometimes there are quests with the same names as Deeds just to give us a little sense of what that looks like. Um, if I come on in to the debug functionality and say, I've completed Warg Slayer. And you know what, let's go one step further and say, I'm in the North Downs. I am not. Um, 
then we can see that not only are there seven different deeds called Warg Slayer, but there's also a quest in the North Downs called Warg Slayer. And because um, the Lotro plugin API doesn't let us know what was just completed, just something that was called Warg Slayer was just completed, um, we have this abomination of a dialogue that we pop up to the user to say, you figure it out, because we can't. Uh, and so today we were fixing an issue with this quest part down here. Uh, but just as a, that's a thing that complicates life until you get to Rohan, uh, there wasn't a specificity. There wasn't a Warg Slayer of the Eastern Net, Warg Slayer of the Western Net, Warg Slayer of Gondor, of Western Gondor even. There was just Warg Slayer. And so Warg Slayer is a particularly bad uh, version of this with its seven different ones. I think Spider Slayer. Um, has several as well. Let's see, come on down to Eriador. Yep, there's four different spider slayers in Eriador, uh, another one in the Great River, but Warg Slayer is pretty bad. Goblin Slayer is probably also. Uh, so, it's so part of the fun when you're trying to determine what's, uh, what's what with quests and deeds is there's no requirement that quests or deeds have distinct names. And probably for the best, eventually you're just want, going to want to have a quest called War, Warg Slayer, uh, and they did. I'm impressed actually that they uh, restrained themselves to only a single quest called Warg Slayer, given how many deeds there are. Okay, well, thank you very much everyone who has joined us today. Um, I think that was the last question we were answering was about plugins that were uh, loaded automatically that weren't meant to be. Uh, what do we have? Yeah, okay. I think that's everything. So that is all we are going to cover today. Um, thank you so much, uh, especially Raiders who are only here for a brief moment. I uh, hope you find another stream that you enjoy watching. Thank you everyone for joining me on this exploration of Lotro plugins. I do hope to see you here next week. Until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.